What's up, everybody? This is Tom with Deep Video Live here on location at Trees in Deep Ellum, Dallas, Texas. And I got uh, this fine established gentleman who I picked off the back of a hay bale truck on the way down here. Calls himself Cremator from the band Ghoul. So, so far, how's this tour been going, man? Uh, the tour has been amazing. We've been killing it night after night, really picking up the slop for the other bands, you know. You know, they, they, they need us to uh, kind of ground them and keep things real, keep things street, you know. Uh, there's a lot of gimmicks out there, but Ghoul's always keeping it, you know, down to earth. Somebody's got to pick up the slack, am I right? That's right, that's right. You know, Ghoul is just out there, just just on the streets, just taking it, telling it like it is, and, you know, bringing the real shit to the kids. As, as you should, as you should. You're doing the Lord's work. But, uh, so... Give me a perspective on what was the scene like when you guys got started versus uh, versus now, because there's been obviously COVID kicked everybody in the nuts and it took a while to come back. But there's been a huge resurgence, at least around here that I've seen. So what's your perspective on that from uh, the rest of the country and all uh, everywhere else that you've been around to? Well, first, I'll speak to the scene in Creepsylvania, which was absolutely dead when we started. <laughs> Abominox has been laying eggs all over, and we need to find them before they hatch and completely infest Quinsylvania. You morons know what these catacombs are better than anyone. Well, I say we take off and nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. And we kind of liked it because we like to play with dead things. So, you know, we got things going with the thrash metal. Things were looking great in the arts. In the 2010s, you know, finally we are able to come to the America because there's enough demand. And, you know, uh, it was getting good. And then, yeah, COVID kicked everybody's ass. And we were also into that because, you know, there was a lot more dead bodies. And that's, as established before, we like to play with the dead things. By the way, sorry about the COVID. We were trying, <laughs> we were trying to make something entirely different. It got out of hand. Uh, but, you know, it was a fun time for all. People got close to their families, got government money, you know, so also you're welcome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but the scene has really kicked into high gear. These shows on this tour have been uh, exceeded all of our expectations. And uh, people have been coming out going fucking nuts, you know. Uh, and we get these monsters on stage and, the, and, the, and uh, it, it's, it's out of control, honestly. Like, it's like we're just trying to play a show. But things are going crazy out there, and, and these people keep coming onto stage, and they try to attack us. And well, you know, we'll do the best we can to give you guys what you want, which is just four normal guys on stage playing some thrash metal. It sounds a little boring, frankly, but we'll we'll make it. Uh, we'll make something out of it. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh... I'm glad you mentioned Creepsylvania. I was uh, curious if there are any plans to uh, continue that hilarious storyline that's been uh, going on with that because I love, I forget what the name of the album was. Stop the show. Stop the show. Hmm? We made it too easy to find you with that infernal racket, you? Now, I'm going to give you one chance to get out of this, you bag headed doofuses. It was from 2017, but uh, is there going to be a continuation of that? I'm sure it's not going to be a happy ending, but... I mean, a storyline. I don't know what you're talking about. This is our lives. This is our lives. Like, people think we're some kind of crazy lyricist, but, you know, we're just writing down what happened that day. It's really more of like a live journal, honestly. <laughs> I didn't realize this was actually a documentary. I'm so sorry. Yes, absolutely. You know, we like to get out of the country because, of course, it's full of chaos and mayhem and death, and, you know, like, even ghoul is not safe entirely there. And, you know, we like to come out and steal your American dollars and turn them into turnips for ourselves back home. But uh, really, we're just writing down what uh, what happens day to day in our lives. You know, we're keeping it real, keeping it street. boy. So how many turnips does it take to, uh, like, what's the turnip economy look like we're here from? Oh, the Listen, Bobby, this country has a substantial turnip value attached to it. Turnip economy is terrible. Yeah. Oh, my God. The, the, it, it costs... It costs like 25 turnips to get one turnip to actually eat now. It's like food costs are just skyrocketing everywhere. I'm sure I'm sure you're suffering that here. We're suffering that also in Creepsylvania. They're starting to bury the bodies deeper and deeper, so it's more and more work for us to get our dinner onto the dinner table. It's 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 madness out there, man. I mean, someone should do something about these things. Somebody really should. The call to action right here on Deep Video Live. That's right. Take to the streets and tell them to lower the price of turnips by at least 20 turnips. Yes. We'll get on that. We'll definitely get on that. So, uh, okay. Can you give us any uh, good horror stories from on the road? Any uh, any juicy stories that stand out? Maybe the statute of limitations is up. Oh, uh, on the road, uh, juicy stories. We did run into a, a tomato truck. It was very juicy. <laughs> yeah. 
But you know, so far I cannot really divulge too many juicy stories uh, because, uh, frankly, the I, I think the people are watching this, correct? Yes, ostensibly. At least like two viewers. It's four, four and a half. Four and a half viewers. <laughs> Um, one of them is probably FBI, and I don't think we can be really divulging our crimes right now. That's a, bit, that's a smart move. I was, that was a test, and you passed. That's right. I'm very, very smart. As you can tell, I'm living the dream. That's, that's fucking amazing. So, all right. So, word has it on the street that you're a pretty good cook. I know but maybe that's a secret you don't want getting out, but uh, would, uh, give us some good recipes, Cremator. Oh, well, you know, I just, uh, so first build a giant fire. Yeah. Get a human body. Old Bay seasoning will take you a long way. Old Bay goes Old on everything. Bay. It's, a, it's great. You know, they, Maryland is trying to hide that from everybody, but just, just, just a little Old Bay. You know, you put some scallions on it, too. You know, get a little bit of the flavor in there. But at the, at, at, you know, they solder. Not the hard flavor of the onion is too much. You get the scallion. It just, it's just mm, so much worse. No, sorry. Shallots. That's what I meant to say. Shallots. Scallions are pretty good too, but get a shallot. It's a much softer flavor, and that thigh will just be like dripping off the bone, just right into your mouth. Just you're making me hungry, bro. <laughs> Looking at you, you're making me hungry. Well, I mean, uh, well, maybe there's a reason I'm red in the face. <laughs> so, um, what is it about the old school necessarily that keeps people coming back? Because metal nowadays is very, uh, a lot of it's very polished and technical, which, you know, it's great. Innovation, fr uh, friction causes innovation, all that good stuff. But there's really something about that raw and ugly, uh, like just off the cuff aspect that people just go nuts for. What's your perspective on that? My perspective is that's all we know how to play. You know, we're not very good musicians, so... We keep it old school so that we can just make a simple Neanderthalic riff that people like to mosh to and punch each other in the face. Yeah. So, you know, if I could, I'd probably be playing like some jazz, some Nina Simone, some, you know, like uh, being a good band that made money would be a good idea for me, but I am no good. So we keep it old school here. That's debatable, but we don't have time for that. One more question. You're going to debate me? On, I know I'm a bad bass player, man. You can't <laughs> debate me on this. I'm there every night watching myself. It's horrible. That's, okay, that actually ties in perfectly to the next question that I was going to ask, because there is... A, way. <laughs> put a little graphic in there. So, uh, yeah, there is also a heavy comedic element to Ghoul. It's just hilarious, and uh, I love... What, what do you mean? Uh, it's, uh, Am I a joke to you? Am I some kind of a clown? This is funny. How the fuck am I? How the fuck am I funny, Henry? But uh, so I really, I always appreciate it when fans don't take themselves too super seriously because at the end of the day, we're all just trying to have fun, even if you know some uh, some occasional dismemberment happens. So sure. What's uh, give us your perspective on that, on that, if you wouldn't mind? I mean, I literally have a bag on my head. How can I take life seriously? <laughs> I have no lower jaw. My penis was blown off in an explosion. Oh. You know, if you can't just, like, roll with life's punches of having a one-inch mutilated dick, like, you know, how else are you going to continue? you got to laugh at it, you know? Like, ha ha! There's nothing there. It's just a one-inch mound of flesh. It's garbage. It's, you're going to write a song about that. Yeah, you know, I just, like, I, every time I got to take a piss, I'm just, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Oh, is that who left the fucking mess in there? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit pussy, I understand. You know, yeah, there was a, the there was a smell, but it's, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, you know, I, there's a little bit of a smell here after a month of touring, too. Well, these things happen when you're a, when you're a touring professional. You want to check it out? <laughs> I've had worse. I, I'll, I I'll keep working on it. Yeah, we'll talk after talk the show. Talk to me after the show. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna... I saw a pile of dung here it's somewhere in Deep Ellum. I'm going to go roll it. Oh, well, they, uh, one of many, I'm I was sure. going to do it anyways, but uh, you know, you get to you get to enjoy the benefits. Now, you, yeah, now you have a reason to. That's right. Oh, this has been beautiful. Well, you know what? I think I'm all out of questions, brother. This was... Uh, this I'm all out of patience. So that's a good timing. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's the sort of professionalism that we have here at Deep Video Live. So... Cremator, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I look forward to killing you at the show. Oh, I look forward to it too. That way I don't have to go to fucking work on Monday. Hell yeah, fuck work. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, brother. Deep Video Live, Trees, Deep Ellum. Bonsoir! You know how it is.